and the treatment had four components. Breathing training to breathe, uh, to be relaxed. That's about 10 minutes in session one. Education about common reactions to trauma. That's about 20 minutes in session two. But the most, the meat of the treatment is emotional exposure to the trauma memory, which we do 30 to 45 minutes during the session, and in vivo exposure to trauma reminders, which we do in life, in reality, between sessions. And the treatments are very short. They are about nine to 12 weekly or twice weekly sessions. Now, what is imaginal exposure? In imaginal exposure, the patients are asked to recount the dramatic memories during sessions and listen to the tape recorder recounting between sessions. So we ask them, close your eyes and recount the dramatic memory. I was going walking in the street, uh, I hear a noise behind me, and so on and so forth. And then I was, you know, and then describing of the rape, for example, or describing of what happened in combat. Um, and in vivo exposure, the patient confront face trauma related situation and object between sessions, uh, starting with the less fearful situation and going to more fearful ones. Um, so um, I want to show you uh, a little bit of how uh, a patient recounts the trauma memory. How do we do imaginary exposure? <coughs> There's an intense remembrance of the events when you first found out about my daughter's death. Um, things like the phone call that we received, uh, having to go to the hospital, seeing her body uh, in the church. Those images and, and visualizations as I was telling the story was, a, was an important part of the treatment. I think when I got to the, the point in the treatment where I, after repeating my story on, on her death six, seven, eight times, uh, more and more intensely each time, when I got to the point where I was asked to talk to Jackie directly, as if she was still there, uh, I thought I was doing better than something that, that made me feel inside that I could handle this. And now we look at Sherry and how she's doing this. Well, at this moment I'm asleep on my bed and um, I, I hear a noise in my sleep. I'm hearing a noise that uh, uh, wakes me up and talks me into a wakeness and I see just the outline of somebody standing in the doorway, and I, I don't really know if I see somebody, but I think I do. And then I guess I'm, I'm a little more awake now, and, and I see somebody standing there, and he's all dressed in black from head to foot with a, a hood over his face, with just the eyes and the mouth cut out. And all of a sudden, and I'm really terrified because I don't know this person, they don't belong there. Um, and I, I, I don't know what to think about this. I'm just thinking for an instant that it's not really real, but I know it is really real. And I don't feel anything. You know, I'm just, it's like it's not real. It's like I'm, I'm a moment of disorientation of what I'm looking at. He starts to move toward me, he's moving toward me, and I jump up out of the bed and I'm just screaming and screaming and screaming. Um, and I see he has a gun in his hand, he's pointing his gun at me, and um, you know, I'm shaking all over, my hands are shaking, and I just keep thinking, how can I get out of this? It's, it's already happening, but I just want it to go away. I just don't want this to be real. I don't want to have to deal with this person being here in, in my room. And I'm thinking that he's there to, to steal something. And I, 
might just happen to wake up and maybe you'll just go on you can take you know time and you can have anything you want you can you can take anything that you want now i'm handcuffed now you can't move you can't do anything you didn't want to fight you didn't try to get away you didn't do anything and now you're already immobilized and not moving not going anywhere he's not asking me for money or looking around the room i realize he came here to rape me i feel sick i feel like i'm going to throw up and my head is spinning and, and it's like all the blood in my body has rushed to my head and i can't think and i wish i would faint he puts a, his gun to my head and he's pressing it into my temple and and he's telling me you know i could kill you you know i'm going to kill you if you don't be quiet so that gives you a sense of how the treatment uh, is done. Uh, and so now I just want to show you a little bit of the, um, the how effective the treatment is. And here is a study that we randomized people into prolonged exposure, stress regulation training, the combination and the weight is control. And the study was only five weeks. It was only nine sessions. And the, the, the women, they were all, the women were all rape victims. All of them had PTSD and a lot of other, many of them had depression as well. Uh, and um, on the average, on the average, uh, they were five years after, um, after the rape. So they were quite chronic PTSD. Um, 